Hello growers, I'm Dr. MJ Coco from CocoForCannabis.com. We publish articles, tutorials, and guides on the science and practice of growing cannabis. And I conduct independent grow light tests as part of our comprehensive grow light guide. Today I'm testing the new, upgraded, Vipar Spectra XS2000. It's a nice mid-sized quantum board style grow light. The Vipar Spectra XS series have top-end components with Samsung LM301B diodes and meanwhile drivers. And they just got improved in the summer of 2021 by adding more diodes, increasing the power, and improving the efficiency. They also lowered the price. I'll run it through two PAR tests, and then one lucky grower will have a chance to win this light. If you're watching during the live premiere, guess the three-digit winning number and put it in the chat. If you missed the premiere, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can be part of the next premiere giveaway. The Vipar Spectra XS2000 arrived in a plain brown box. I'll open it up take out the cardboard and the styrofoam padding, and there it is. Let me lift it up. It's a solid feeling fixture, and they use top-end components, like all of these Samsung LM301B diodes. On the other side of the fixture, we can see the Meanwell driver and the ribbed aluminum heat sink. It's a compact design, and it's well built. I really appreciate that they added more diodes to this model. I look forward to seeing how the increased power and added diodes affects its performance. Under the light, we have the user manual and a satisfaction card, and then this accessories box. Let's see, it holds the power cord, two ratchet pulleys, and a cable hanging kit. The XS series is the top of the line from Vipar Spectra. They incorporate high-end Samsung and Meanwell components. However, the original version of the XS2000 only had 504 diodes. In the summer of 2021, they upgraded both the XS2000 and XS1500. They added 72 diodes to the XS2000, which brings the total up to 576. The listed power draw is 240 watts, which means there are now a respectable 2.4 diodes per watt. On the other side, we can see the ribbed aluminum heat sink, which is much better than a flat panel. The meanwhile driver is mounted on the top, and there is a convenient dimmer knob on this side. As we saw, they provide hanging cables and two ratchet pulleys, but I use four ratchet pulleys for my PAR tests. I'll clip them on and then raise the Vipar Spectra XS2000 into position. I'll connect the power cord to the fixture. That's the extent of the installation. I just have to plug it in and we have light. Let's check out the diodes. The Samsung LM301B diodes are two different color temperatures. They use both 3500K warm white and 5000K neutral white. They also include Osram 660 nanometer red and 730 nanometer far red diodes. The diodes are distributed evenly across the rectangular board. Viper Spectrum markets this light for 4x2 coverage. It seems a bit small for a 4 foot long space, but we'll have to run it through the PAR test to see. While we wait for the diodes to warm up, let's go check out the published stats on the XS2000. This is the product page for the XS2000 on the Viper Spectrum website. You can see the current price here is $220, but they offer better deals through Amazon. Right now, there's a $30 coupon that you can click on Amazon, and we have Amazon discount codes for Vipar Spectra that will combine with other sales. For the XS series, use discount code Dr. MJ Coco XS. Currently, with the coupon and our code, you can get the XS2000 for only about $172 plus tax on Amazon, which seems like a crazy good price for this light. We can see here that the power draw is listed at 240 watts, but unfortunately, there are no PPF or photon efficiency data here. They provide some PPFD data, but PPFD data like this do not describe the amount of light produced. We need PPF or efficiency data to use the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light calculator. A lot of manufacturers used to publish inflated numbers. I see less of that now. Several companies have started to publish legitimate sphere test numbers but Vipar Spectra is not showing anything about PPF or efficiency. We can still head over to the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light calculator and try to estimate the XS2000. This is our tool to help growers analyze grow lights. It focuses on the important metrics and allows you to make better comparisons. In the calculator on the right, we load all our tested fixtures. I'll pull up the results from my test with the Vipar Spectra XS1500 last year. We can use the efficiency that I measured with the XS1500 to estimate the XS2000. In the calculator on the left, you can enter your own data. For the XS2000, we saw the published power draw is 240 watts. If you shop on Amazon, click the coupon, 
and use discount code DRMJCOCOXS at checkout. The current price is only about $172. And now we need the PPF or efficiency data. The calculator provides options for different types of PPF data. I'm going to use the data from my PAR test with the XS1500, so I need to select Usable PPF. The XS1500 had a usable photon efficiency of 1.83 micromoles per watt. Okay, so now we have a rough sense of the power of the XS2000. The cost efficiency is incredible at only 39 cents per micromole. This is one of the very best prices you can get. And I need to point out that both the XS1500 and XS2000 have been upgraded since I tested the XS1500 last year. So we should be able to expect a better result in terms of efficiency. We can see that these estimates, the calculator expects the XS2000 to cover about 6.8 square feet. But we'll see if it can do a little better than that. I have the XS2000 set up in a 120 by 60 centimeter test area, which is just about 4 by 2 feet. I'm making sure that it's perfectly centered and level. The hanging height is 43 centimeters, about 17 inches above the sensor. And the maximum PPFD in the center is exactly 1,000 micromoles per square meter. I suspected that the XS2000 would not be able to deliver good density light out to the ends, but it's doing somewhat better than I expected. I've tested several similar lights that draw about 200 watts and advertise 4x2 coverage. They all come up a little short, but the Vipar Spectra XS2000 is doing better than most. That said, the values out at the ends are not that great. Let me record the last few PPFD measurements. And let's check out this 4x2 PAR map from the Vipar Spectra XS2000. Alright, so it's pretty clear that the ends are a little underlit. There's great density throughout the center area from top to bottom, but the density of light drops off at each end. Ideally, we want at least 500 micromoles per square meter everywhere. The Vipar Spectra XS2000 is just a little too small for a 4 foot long space. I think it could cover 3.5 feet. Before I run that test, Let's run the numbers on this one. The hanging height was 43 centimeters, about 17 inches, and the maximum PPFD was 1,000 micromoles per square meter. The average PPFD across the canopy was 631.8 micromoles per square meter. In a 120 by 60 centimeter PAR test, that translates to a usable PPF of 454.9 micromoles. I measured a power draw of 232 watts, which means this improved XS2000 gets a very respectable 1.96 micromoles per watt. Now to get full coverage, you might think I should reduce the test area to three feet long. I did that with other similar fixtures, but this is really closer than it looks. There are 454.9 micromoles of usable PPF. If I remove just one column of squares, there should be enough light to fill in the whole canopy. Okay, I reduced the test area to 105 by 60 centimeters, which is just about three and a half by two feet. The XS2000 is centered and square. In this smaller space, I had to raise it a couple centimeters to keep the maximum PPFD right at 1,000 micromoles per square meter. All right, each fixture makes a certain amount of light. Therefore, each fixture also has an ideal coverage area. The specific area will depend on your targets for maximum and average PPFD. I run our official tests with a maximum PPFD of 1,000 micromoles per square meter, and I recommend an average PPFD of 700 micromoles per square meter. If you have a higher target, the XS2000 will cover less space. But with our targets, three and a half by two feet coverage seems close to perfect for the Vipar Spectra XS2000. Let's check out this PAR map. This is what we're looking for. There is great density in the middle and out to each end. There's just one corner below 500 micromoles per square meter, but otherwise the entire canopy is in the prime photosynthetic range. This is a much better result than we got in the 4x2 PAR test. Let's look back at that map. As we discussed, this is just a little too much space for full density. With a 4 foot long space, the XS2000 left both ends well below 500 micromoles per square meter. But cutting only 3 inches off each end gives the XS2000 a space it can cover well. And it provides excellent density from end to end. 3.5 by 2 feet is not a very common size. So I imagine most growers will run it in a 4x2. It will certainly grow great plants. I would simply recommend hanging it a bit higher than this for the better coverage out to the ends. If you do have a 3.5x2 foot space, the Vipar Spectra XS2000 is a perfect fit. Let's run the numbers. 
In a smaller space, the light is more concentrated. So I had to raise the XS2000 by 2 centimeters. The hanging height in this test was 45 centimeters, about 17 and a half inches. I set that hanging height to keep the maximum PPFD at 1000 micromoles per square meter. In this space, the XS2000 had an average PPFD of 716.7 micromoles per square meter, which is right on target. The usable PPF is just slightly lower than in the 4x2 test. Across 3.5 by 2 feet, the XS2000 delivered a usable PPF of 451.5 micromoles. The power draw remained 232 watts. So the usable photon efficiency stayed almost the same in this test at 1.95 micromoles per watt. It's a great little light, and it's just about time for me to give it away. In the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Guide, I publish complete test results for all the fixtures that I test. Here's the main data for the Vipar Spectra XS2000 in the 4x2 test, and our estimates for coverage area and harvest potential. You can find our discount codes and shopping links. Remember, for the best deals on Vipar Spectra XS series, shop Amazon and use discount code DrMJCocoXS. With the current coupon and our discount code, your cost for the XS2000 will be about $172. That's only 38 cents per micromole. It's a phenomenal deal. But even better, one lucky grower during the premiere of this video is about to get the one I tested for free. The winning number is the usable photon efficiency, 196. Congrats to whoever guessed the closest number. And if you missed the premiere, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can be part of the next one. Below the PAR test data, the PAR map, and the growth space calculator, you'll find my written review. The Vipar Spectra XS series are nice lights. They use top end components and are very easy to use. I really appreciate the upgrades that they made to the XS1500 and XS2000 by adding diodes, increasing the power, and improving the efficiency. I think the XS2000 now has the best performance among a set of similar fixtures on the market. And the discounted price makes the XS2000 absolutely the best deal in its class. Most importantly, it performed really well in my tests. In addition to the two PAR tests, I also tested the dimmer. The dimming knob is continuously adjustable with markings at 25, 50, and 75%. As you can see, the maximum PPFD percentage is close to the dimmer setting in each position. The dimmer makes the XS series lights an excellent choice to use for the whole grow, from seedlings or clones through to the final harvest. I also measured the maximum operating temperatures. The amount of heat a fixture adds to the space is a function of its power draw. But how hot the fixture itself gets depends on the design. Fixtures that run cooler will be more efficient and last longer. With a good heat sink to dissipate the heat, the XS2000 stays pretty cool. The maximum temperature that I measured on the heat sink was 54 degrees Celsius, 129.2 Fahrenheit. The driver ran slightly warmer at 56.6 degrees Celsius, 133.9 Fahrenheit. I think the XS2000 is a great light for home growers. It's easy and convenient to use, produces great light for growing all the way to harvest, and it gets great efficiency for the price. Even if you eventually want a bigger light for flowering, the XS2000 will always be perfect for starting your grows. If it fits your needs and the size of your space, I think the XS2000 is a great choice. At Cocoa for Cannabis, we always put the grower's interests first. Our goal is to provide impartial, science-based testing and reviews for home growers. You support our work when you use our codes to purchase grow lights. I'd like to thank Elaine at Vipar Spectra for sending me the XS2000 to test. And thank you for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Check out my other part test reports and grow light physics videos. And I hope you come to visit us at CocoaForCannabis.com. You can read our articles, chat in the chat room, join our grow challenges, and try your hand at the grow light calculator. Learn about all our grow light giveaways on our deals and discounts page. Grow your own, but don't grow alone. Let's grow together. I'm Dr. MJ Coco, sending all of you grower love.